Come on up here and stand on the stage. Go ahead and line up there a little bit. Now, what we do is we're going to, uh, we're, we are going to, I'm going to do a re, what's called a reaffirmation of your faith, where I'm going to read you through a series of questions, and you're going to reaffirm your faith, and then we're going to rededicate you in the name of the Lord. So, uh, first off, do you reaffirm your renouncement of sin and the power of evil in your life and in the world? Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Do you believe that the words of the Old and New Testaments to be faithful and true, the only rule for faith and life? Will you be a faithful partner of this congregation and through worship and service seek to advance God's purpose here and throughout the world? Do you promise to accept the spiritual guidance of the church, to walk in a spirit of Christian love with this congregation, and to seek those things that make for unity, purity, and peace? Nicole Auber, I rededicate you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I thank you for her faith. Lord, I thank you for her boldness to stand before people here today. And I pray that her faith would persevere, Lord, and that she would continue to grow to be more and more like you. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Linda Boyd, I rededicate you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I thank you for Linda's life. I thank you for all the, the happenings in her life that brought her to this particular moment. And I just pray that her faith would, would grow and persevere and that she would just continue to be the person you called her to be. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Tyler Fletcher, I rededicate you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I bless Tyler in your name. I pray that he would just continue to grow stronger in his faith and that, Lord, he would persevere through all circumstances and that he would be a man who stands before you with boldness. I pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank everybody. We're going to give Linda has a Linda wants to say a few words. She's got a few words to say to us. So anybody else want to say anything? <laughs> I want to just tell you. I say this, said this the last service. It's a well known fact that man a person's greatest fear is public speaking. Their second greatest fear is death. So what that means is, is that a funeral, most people would rather be in the casket than giving the eulogy. <laughs> so I'm very thankful for people that are brave enough to say a few words. So Linda, Linda Boyd wants to say something. Who I used to be included such adjectives as bitter, depressed, lonely, and lost. I dwelled on the past and was in constant need to understand every detail of every situation. I searched for happiness that would never surface. I was easily influenced, not wanting to make waves or hurt anyone's feelings. I was a believer, but not a follower. In late February, my mom had been in the nursing home for nine months. She was losing more of herself and withdrawing from the world. The strongest person I have ever known became fragile and distant. I didn't have to seek Jesus. He found me confused, despaired, and a bit broken. He built me back up. He came to comfort and prepare me. I lost my mom in July and had always had this picture in my mind of how I would react. When that didn't become a realization, I knew there was a greater force at work. Although I miss her tremendously, I know he's been there on my sad and glad days beside me to hold me my hand 
or behind me to give me that extra nudge. Since, since then, the church has become more than a building, it's peaceful refuge. It's been more than a congregation, it's fellowship. And it's been more than a routine, it's turned into transformation. Who have I become? Someone who feels free from needing comforting or company as I find it by reading scripture. Someone who doesn't turn to the bottle for consolation as I find it in reflection. And someone who finds healing and understanding through prayer. Someone also who lacks worry because I know he has an eye and a gracious hand on me. I've been shown my self-worth and an appreciation for every day. I've become a person who no longer requires all the answers because my path is his will. I can only pray and have faith Jesus will accept this offering of recommitment and guide me each day forward. Very good. Anybody else? Good. All right. Well, welcome them and praise God. So, we, so good job, guys. Congratulations. I'd like the Udelhovens to come forward now. Margo and Bryce and Miley Joe. All those curls. <laughs> now I want to let you know that typically what I do, we're going to go through a series of questions again, but then uh, if you're not familiar with when I baptize infants, I actually do the etymology lookup of their name, and then uh, I try to find a Bible verse that uh, I think would be, that would be significant for them as they continue to grow older. So um, first of all, what I'd like to do uh, as we, again, uh, her baptism is made valid through your faith. So as parents, we, you reaffirm your faith and, and your agreement to raise her uh, as a Christian child, and we as a congregation agree to help them. Uh, and so just repeat after me as, we, as, as, as you reaffirm your faith as well. Do you again reaffirm to renounce sin and the power of evil in your life and in the world? Who is your Lord and Savior? Do you believe the words of the Old and New Testaments to be faithful and true, the only rule for faith and life? Will you be a faithful partner to this congregation and through worship and service seek to advance God's purposes here and throughout the world? Do you promise to instruct your child in the truth of God's word, in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, to pray for her, to teach her to pray, to train her in Christ's way by your example through worship and in the nurture of the church? And then finally, do you promise to accept the spiritual guidance of the church to walk in a spirit of Christian love with this congregation and to seek those things that make for unity, purity, and peace? Excellent. So Miley, Miley Joe. So Miley Joe, Miley actually is a variant of, uh, do, you, do, you, have you, do you know the etymology of the name and the meaning of names? Okay, so this will be new to you guys. So, so if I do something other than what you, <laughs> every so often my research doesn't always jive with the parents, so that makes for interesting. But Miley is a variant of the English Miles, the English name Miles, which comes from the German, which is a variant of the German Milo. It's the feminine of Milo, which means gracious or soldier. It's kind of weird to mean one or the other, but gracious or soldier and then, of course, Joe is a variant of Joanna, which is derived from John, which means Yahweh is gracious. So there's a lot of graciousness in, in Miley's name. And so her verse uh, comes from Joel 2, verse 13. The word of the Lord says, Don't tear your clothing in grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. So those are your words. Blessing. So come on forward. So we baptize you. Miley Joe Udelhoven, I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I bless her in your name. I lift her up to you. I pray that she would grow to know you in powerful ways and that you would guide her parents to be the people that you've called them to be. We pray this all in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. I was given a warning beforehand that she's not in a great mood, but what a sweet girl. I said, I can handle, I, I've seen it all at this point. I can handle just about anything. Uh, so we're, we're excited about that. Uh, now at this time, if you are participating in a believer baptism, uh, please come forward. And we have a video to show you. Today, I tell my friends, my family, the world, that the old Adam, the old Jimmy, the old Crystal is dead. I have been buried with Christ. My sin is gone, nailed to the cross, and paid for by the blood of my Savior, of my Jesus. Today, I declare that by God's relentless, unfailing grace, I am forgiven. I am free. I am new. Excellent. Well, again, what we're going to do, just like we've done for everybody else, we're going to walk you through a series of questions uh, where you can affirm your faith, and then we will get in the baptismal. So, as we, yeah. <laughs> so as we run through, uh, re, uh, answer honestly and faithfully as we ask you to profess your faith. Do you renounce sin and the power of evil in your life and in the world? Who is your Lord and Savior? Do you believe in the words of the Old and New Testament to be true, faithful, and the only rule for faith in life? Believe in the Bible? Will you be a faithful partner of this congregation and through worship and service seek to advance God's purposes here and throughout the world? Do you promise to accept the spiritual guidance of the church, to walk in a spirit of Christian love with this congregation, and to seek those things that make for unity Purity and peace. Got a shit Thank <laughs> you. 
all come forward, I just want to uh, remind you that, again, these words are just all about what God's been doing in their lives. Uh, some come from various places. Some may be a surprise. But it's just, it's just a testimony to God's faithfulness. So, so first is Nicole Burdess, who uh, she actually gave her testimony in the last service. Are you feeling a little better in this service? Okay. <laughs> so be praying for her as she speaks to you. But powerful words. So I'm going to rewind about, I just had a little revelation today is January 11th. And four months ago today, September 11th, um, I went in for a pretty major surgery, um, a pretty routine surgery that ended not so routine. Um, during that procedure, just to spare some details, part of my uh, aortic artery was punctured, and I all but died on the table. So to be here today is nothing short of a miracle. Um, I've had many people in the last few months tell me how lucky I am to be here. And while lucky is a term that we use pretty, pretty much every day, I looked up a synonym for lucky, and it's favored. And you're probably thinking I'm crazy to come up with the conclusion that I feel favored um, from my experience. But at that time, I was running from the Lord. And I was very angry and very bitter and very hurt by circumstances in my life. Um, and at that moment, God stripped away every piece of who I thought I was, every name, every idea, every thought, every feeling. Um, when I woke up, I wasn't the same person. My husband told several people he didn't know who I was anymore because I had the most anxious personality you could imagine. I worried about everything. When you wake up from something like that, you realize you are not in control of any part of your life. Um, I told God I wanted to run from him, and he laughed at me and said, there's no way I'm letting go of you. I had been praying for something big in my life because I just felt like, God, I, I just can't do this. So if that's what you're praying, I'm sorry, because you're going to get a big answer. Um, this hasn't been easy for me or my family. Um, it's been a roller coaster of emotions, um, physical healing. But I will tell you this, God has given me a new start at life, a second chance, and a lot of people don't get that. And I'm just so thankful for him because there were so many of you here that were praying for me um, the morning of the surgery, that afternoon when you found out what happened, and every day since. And I just want to say that I am so thankful and grateful that um, my church, who has become my family, has walked alongside us and helped us. Um, and. I just want to leave with one verse, um, which is Jeremiah 29, 11, which keeps coming back to me from different people, different circumstances these last few months. And it says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen. And that's exactly what he's done to me. Um, it has been an experience that I will say has been the best and worst experience, but I am thankful to God, and I'm anxious to see what he's going to do in my life. Next one up is Beth, Beth Clymer. Hello. My testimony today is to offer hope. I was born into a loving Christian family. When I was 10 years old, my life changed dramatically. Um, cancer took my mother. I was left with a massive hole in my heart. I became very angry during my teenage years. 
I drifted away from God. In the late 1990s, I was introduced to methamphetamine. I became addicted. My addiction was a very dark and lonely place. I was in the devil's playground. I spent hours and hours reading scripture. I prayed to God, I asked him to help me get out of the hell I was living in. I could not do it without his help. Isaiah 40, 29, he gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. God answered my prayers. I was arrested for possession of methamphetamine. I went to a jail for a short period of time. Hebrews 13, 6, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. After I was released from jail, I went into a drug treatment program. I was eight weeks inpatient and four weeks outpatient. While in drug treatment, I had the opportunity to go through grief therapy with Peter Pentis. Peter was a Holocaust survivor. He was also a true gift to not only my life, but many others. Peter helped me release some of the old pain that I had held in my, in my heart from the loss of my mother. I had used drugs to numb the pain and to fill that massive hole in my heart. Jesus now fills that hole in my heart. This coming March, I'll have been blessed with 16 years of sobriety from methamphetamine. I give our Lord and Savior full credit for that. It was not me that did it. My prayer for those struggling with addiction is that they too will find Jesus and enjoy the blessings I have gotten from sobriety. I have gained back my relationships with my family as well as their respect. I regained confidence, respect, and pride in myself. I have peace in my life and in my heart. Most importantly, I have a wonderful relationship with Jesus. Isaiah 40, 31, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. He restored my soul. Amen. God bless you. Sometimes I think that, you know, there's a, there's a disconnect in our understanding sometimes when we're on the outside looking in. I think people sometimes look at a church and they think, oh, well, you know, it's, it's about this or it's about that or, or you know, it's, it's something uh, filtered through some kind of a worldly notion. Folks, it's all about captives being set free. It's all about the lost being found. And it's about the power of God working in people's lives. This is not a religion. This is real. And there's people that stand here and they declare, they're just like, you know what? I don't have all the answers. But I know that I know Jesus. And he's working in my life. And so we, we rejoice. We celebrate. 
at what God is doing. And so what we want to do is we want to invite all the participants back up here. Uh, come on back up. We're going to do a prayer together as, a, as one body. And if you are friends or family or you're just somebody that's, that, want, that feels drawn by the Spirit, we want you to come forward uh, and uh, feel free to join us up here as we pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just lift each person up to you, each one that, that was offered up or offered themselves up today, each one that, that took a risk of, of claiming their love for you through the brokenness in their own lives. And really, Lord Jesus, if all of us are honest, all of us got to you through our brokenness, not through our knowledge or through our strength or through anything great that we did. It was all you. So I praise you, God, for the testimonies that really brought all this together. And I praise you for the baptisms where people, the people that made a conscious choice via your calling, via your presence, but they chose to step into the water of baptism. And I praise you, God, for the parents asked you to set their child apart today, that asked you to touch that child through Steve's hands today. And all this occurred. And it occurred because you are our Lord, because we have surrendered our lives to you. And Lord Jesus, we just thank you for allowing us to do this. And we just we just want to make this day for you. And as, as we move into communion and worship, Lord Jesus, we just praise you that you have blessed these sacraments to be a to be a way of an inward cleansing. It's like the baptism. There was an outside cleansing, and now we all come together for an in, inward cleansing via taking in your body, your blood. And so we just praise you, Jesus, that that is exactly what you called this, that anyone that eats of this bread, drinks of this cup, will have life with you and will have it abundantly. So, Lord Jesus, we just praise you for this day, and I lift each person that has taken part in it to you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's applaud for the Lord.